Welcome to the Karen Kenny Show. Hey, you guys. Welcome to the Karen Kenny Show. I am wicked excited to be here with you today. And let me just start off by saying, if you can hear the sound of my voice, thank you so much for listening, for tuning in. And it just delights me to think that right now you could be taking me out on a walk, like with your dog or you're in your car with your kids or you're out on a run or you're doing something. And then I kind of get to tag along for the ride. <laughs> Because I don't know where everybody listens to this thing. Somebody was saying the other day, they would listen to one of my episodes or a podcast I was on while they were in the shower. So I'm like, oh my God, I'm in people's bathrooms. Like, how fun is that? So just thank you for tuning in. Thank you for your support of the show. It means a lot to me. I know in this day and age when people's time and schedules are super duper busy, uh, the fact that you continue to download the show listen to the show, support the show. It means so much to me. So thank you so much for that. Today's going to be pretty short and sweet because it's just an idea. It's just like this quirky little idea that popped into my head. It's something that I've thought about many times over the year, but not in this particular way. And I'm going to, I'll give you a little backstory of where the inspiration for this episode came from. You know me, I always love to tell a little story and then we'll dive into something a little bit more deeply. So a couple of weeks ago, I was trying to uh, I was trying to nail down a time when myself and two of my girlfriends could have like a virtual like call, like a Zoom call, right, to connect and see each other because the three of us had not have not been able to you know all be together at the same time for 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 a while. So when I was you know sending the text message to confirm the time, I really wanted to make sure that we are all showing up when we were supposed to. And what I mean by that is. You know, when you're in the entrepreneurial world, if you are somebody who has an online calendar or an online scheduler, like something like Acuity or Calendly or whatever the thing is, you're asked to set the time zone in your time zone where you live. Now, for some people, when they get that invite, <clears throat> if, if Google or whatever calendar that they use does not, you know, have a way of converting that, you know, sometimes you can get the time wrong. Who here has ever been invited to an event, to a webinar, to a, a you know, a workshop, something online or whatever, and you think that sucker is happening at like 1 p.m. your time, and it turns out it's actually at 4 p.m. because the other person's in California and things were set in their time zone, right? So when I'm sending this text message to my friends, I break it all down and I say, hey, we're going to meet at this time. And we all three of us live in different time zones. So I'm like, so that's like 1 p.m. for me, 2 p.m. for you, and 3 p.m. for you. <laughs> and, you know, so I was breaking it down. And we were kind of chuckling at that. But it was important for me because I wanted us all to be able to be there and to have the information correct. So it got me thinking about all these different time zones. And a lot of times in the contingent U.S., like we, we kind of think of things as maybe being like, oh, four major time zones. Well, I did a little research and did you guys know that there's like nine time zones in the United States and in the U.S. territories? So one of the great things about being as uh, weird and curious as I am <laughs> is that I sat, you know, I, I start thinking about time zones and I'm like, wait, how many time zones are there actually? Because I could have sworn that I saw a time zone that I had never seen before somewhere. And it was AST. And I was like, what the hell is AST? And I'm like, I guess it's Atlantic time zone or Atlantic standard time. And I'm like, what is that? So I Google. So here's the lesson. Now, here's the caveat. Some of you super smarty pants out there might be like, no shit, Sherlock. You know, no shit, KK. We already know this. But I did not know this. So, hey. I, 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 I uh, live another day and I learn another day. So it's really exciting to me. So there's nine time zones, okay? There's AST, which is, uh, that's the Atlantic one. Then there's EST, Eastern, CST, Central, right? MST, Mountain, PST, Pacific. Then there's AKST. That's Alaska. Alaska time. How cool is that? And then there's HST, which I guess is Hawaii time. And then two of the territories, it's like, UTC-11 and then UTC-10, plus I think it is. So we have all these different time zones. And I started thinking, hey, these time zones. But you know, there's another time zone. There's another time zone. It's kind of like a secret squirrel time zone. 
that never gets talked about. And when I was thinking about it today, I'm like, let's talk about this because I actually think it's wicked important, especially in our experience as a human being. Being here in, in, in this human classroom, in this human experience, I always say we are spiritual beings. We are spirit having a human experience. A lot of times, some people call it earth school. Some people call it the illusion. Some people call it the dream, but we're here in this human experience. And one of the things that can be really helpful sometimes, especially when we think shit is not working out in our favor or shit is not going our way. And we're like, why isn't this happening? This 10th time zone, the secret squirrel time zone is what I call DST. This is divine standard time. <laughs> divine standard time. And then sometimes there's a DDT, divine daylight time. And that's when that's when God source the universe, whatever you want to call it, right? Source your highest self, your higher power is saving your ass sometime. It's gonna, it's gonna speed up and quicken up, you know, the learning process to help you get the fuck out of your own way. So I was laughing at this because who can relate? Double amen hands here. If you've ever had a time, a situation, a relationship, whatever, when you were just kind of like knocked on your ass because you didn't get the girl or the guy or the person or the job or the gig or things didn't work out and, and when you thought they would, you thought that you would be, how often do we do this, right? Because Because so much of, so much of the world is obsessed with like setting five-year goals and three-year goals and where are you going to be in six months and what do you think is going to happen? And and there's all this like hyper planning of productivity, right? So everybody's like, oh, and it's like, oh man, like I, I, I've actually heard kids in their 20s online saying shit like, oh, I thought I'd be making six figures by now or seven figures by now. I thought, and I'm like, by now? I'm like, your brain isn't even done forming yet. And we're worried about like these things. So we end up having these plans, these ideas of when things are supposed to happen. Now, in A Course in Miracles, there's a line that um, always makes me laugh because it says a healed mind, healed mind does not plan. And people always are like, hey, what does that mean? Like as humans here in the human experience, you know, we kind of have to have some plans. We kind of need to have like a schedule and some structure and some systems and knowing when shit's actually going to happen or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay, let's, let's look at it from this angle. So I always think about like kind of just twisting the lens a tiny bit like a kaleidoscope, but it's like whole new perspective, right? So the way that I look at this is that a healed mind does not plan. And I've talked about this before, but this is how the brain learns repetition, right? Repetition is the mother of all learning. So a healed mind does not plan, which to me means doesn't mean you don't have a plan. It's just that your ass does not make that plan all on your own. <laughs> Meaning we don't make it with the ego, with that ego agenda of like, I, I'm going to like lock down onto this thing and I'm going to make it happen and I'm going to, uh, right? You know, it's like, no, tap in to your intuition, tap into your inner teacher, tap into that gut instinct, tap into that divine intelligence, that spirit, that Holy Spirit, that part of you that is always in communion with the divine, the part of you that I always say that the part of you that is smarter than you, you know what I mean? The real you, that part of you that has access to uh, super duper smarty pants stuff. <laughs> so when we're making a plan, but for me, part of making a plan from a, a more, um, and again, this is just for me, I'm speaking for myself. For me, making plans with a more um, divine design is, is knowing that there is a DST, that there is a divine standard time. And then sometimes there's a quickening, there's a DDT, there's a, day, there's a divine daylight time. And what to me that means is that sometimes when things don't pan out in a time frame, in a schedule, in a way that I thought they should, or I thought they would, this is more about living in when I thought they could. This is more about the expansiveness and the flexibility of possibility. 
I'm going to say that again. This is about being in the expansive, the expansiveness and the flexibility of possibility. That's how DST feels for me. There's no grasping. There's no forcing. There's no rushing. There's no pushing. Um, you know, I did a podcast episode with my beautiful friend, um, Meg Haynes, Meg Marinaccio. Some of you might know her by Meg Haynes or Meg, her married name, Marinaccio. And I, I think the title of that was Let's Normalize Slow Growth. We are such an obsessed culture with hurry up and get shit done. We want immediate access to things. We want things to happen fast. We, we are a culture whose nervous systems do not like to wait. We lack for a lot of, I can speak for myself for sure, but a lot of us lack that ability for patience of being able to sit still and wait. I remember when I was a kid, there'd be times when we were driving on the highway and my stepfather would be like, look at these fucking assholes. Everybody, like, you know, people would be like turning on their blinkers, trying to cut into lanes and everybody's rushing and doing shit. And he'd be like, look at these fucking assholes. Everybody's in a, in a rush to hurry up and wait because he knew there was going to be traffic up ahead, you know? And I think about that. We're all in this rush <laughs> because we think we know. We think we know when things should go down, how they should go down, why they should go down, who should be there, well, how it should turn out. But none of us have like the golden key map, right? None of us have what I call kind of like that omnipotent viewpoint. So sometimes we have to develop a little bit of trust. And this is why having a DSP, a daily spiritual practice, can be so helpful and powerful in this very uncertain human experience. Because so much shit is not going to happen and go down the way that we think it should or how we want it to or whatever. But if we develop a trust or faith or um, a belief in something greater, something all loving, something beyond um, just what humans have scope with. Do you know what I mean? Like there is something greater that understands how the seasons happen and the moon and the tides and the stars and the mysteries and the magic and the miracles of it all. There's something greater. So if shit doesn't go down on my plan, how and who I am now at this age, where I am in my life, I can step back and say, oh, this is DST. It's not happening on AST, CST, PST, EST. It's definitely not happening on KKT. <laughs> Karen <Kenny> time. <laughs> this is happening on DST. And every once in a while, you get that little gift, right? That little extra oomph, that little DDT when something, something happens faster, something surprises you. You get like, like um, delighted, just surprised and delighted by like, oh my God, I can't believe that this is happening now. Or, you know, and I can just think of it like maybe like people getting pregnant, you know, like when they didn't think that they could or whatever, all these little miraculous ways when the money shows up just when you need it or the person or the help or whatever, the solution arrives. And it's just like, oh my God, I, I couldn't even, how many times have you heard people say double A men hands? You know, I couldn't, I can't plan this shit. Like you can't plan this shit because stuff is often happening and it's not actually requiring our input because there is DST. There is some divine standard time happening. Now, I know a lot of people also, you know, if you're not somebody who, you know, is more spiritually inclined, there are people who are very scientifically inclined and they just think, you know, there's like chaos theory and random things happening and whatever. But I don't know. I, I've just always kind of, and I'm not saying they're wrong. I, I think we all get to believe whatever we want to believe. But I just have a deep faith and trust that stuff is unfolding. It doesn't always mean that, you know, because there's a lot, there's a lot that's, that's said in the spiritual world, right? Like, Oh, uh, and people say stupid shit. Can I just, can we just be honest? Let's just have a moment of, uh, let's just be blatant. Let's just be blatantly direct right now, right? And I can say this as somebody who has had, um, you know, uh, losses in my life. Like who hasn't? We've all had people who have died. Um, people we've loved, we've lost people sometimes in traumatic or graphic or brutal or violent or unexpected um, ways. 
and humans, humans, I'm going to do, I should just do a whole show about this. In fact, I'm going to be talking to somebody who I'm having on my podcast really soon, who I'm wicked excited about. Uh, he's brilliant, brilliant man named J.S. Pack, And we're going to talk about grief. But there are stages when we're in grief, when other humans don't know what to do with our grief. And they think they're being comforting. They think they're saying something that's going to be supportive and helpful. And they say stupid shit like, you know, um, and they don't mean it to be stupid. They think it, they, it's what they know, right? Let me put it that way. It's not that they're being stupid. It's like these are the things that humans say to each other because they don't actually know what to say. So they just try to say the things that they've heard passed down through the years. You know, oh, God always takes, you know, the good ones first or God just wanted to call your child home. And, you know, you say that to a grieving parent and they're like, well, I wanted my fucking kid here. You know what I mean? So I was like, oh, there's a reason for this. And there are times when that that, you know, sometimes you should just be quiet <laughs> and try not to be like, oh, so what I'm saying is, though, I do. That's a whole and we're back and we're back. But I, I do believe that a lot of times things are unfolding in the right time, um, even better than when I could have predicted, because there have been times in my life when I I said, thank God, right? Like, thank God I did not get the thing that I thought I wanted. And instead, I got what I needed. And I got it at a time when I was ready for it. I've known some wicked, talented people in my life. And I've often said, you know, thank God they didn't get the success that they have earlier because I think it would have killed them. I don't know if they would have survived it. A lot of times I think we're kind of building the container. And you guys have also heard me share that quote that I love by Robert Dranath Tagore that says, everything that is ours, everything that belongs to us will come to us when we create the capacity to receive it. And I feel like a lot of my life has been preparing me and building up to a point when I have the capacity to receive all the miracles, all the stuff that is supposed to be mine and is supposed to come my way. And that's why I don't worry about competition. And I don't worry about, um, I don't ever look at other people. Do I want to say ever? Wait, do I want to say ever? There are times when I think to myself, ah, I wish my book was done already. You know, there are times like that. So that I, I shouldn't say ever. I'll say almost never, almost never do I look at other people and think, um, I should be there right now, like at that point, at that level, at whatever. I really do trust and believe that my life is unfolding uh, in total DST, total divine standard time. And I have little bursts and moments of, of brilliance of DDT when things happen in a quickening state. And I get surprised and it's like, whoa, like I just feel like everything is aligning and conspiring in my favor. But I feel like in some ways, even the shit I didn't like, even the shit I didn't understand, even the heartbreak, even the misery, even the suffering, all this stuff, the shit that knocked me on my ass and brought me to my knees. Now, when you have some time and some space and some healing has happened, I can look back and say, even that in some way, even that in some way was something that was for me and coming through me or to me. You know what I mean? Um, and there can be some tough, tough pills to swallow in this human experience. Some things that we just can't understand why they had to happen and when they happen and all of those things. And it's not for me to try and explain it away or make it okay for anybody. We all have to have our experiences and feel our feelings and do our grief process and our forgiveness processes and all those things in our own time, in our own way. Um, we can't rush that stuff for sure. But I just wanted to drop this in here because I think it can be um, a friendly and a happy and a calming and a peaceful way to sometimes look at something and say, oh, yeah, this isn't happening on my timeline. This is DST at work. And sometimes we can be really surprised to find that the way, remember that, remember that um, Heinz 57 ketchup commercial, that anti, you don't want me to sing it, but the anticipation. <laughs> Right, you go, anticipation, it's making me wait. And you just see that the ketchup just slowly coming down the neck of the bottle. And it says it's so good. Yeah, it doesn't always feel so good when you're waiting for your ship to come in and you're like, hello, hello, Houston. Hello, have you forgotten that we, that we have a missed signal down here? But look, you guys, 
That's how I feel. There's not just nine time zones, there's 10th. There's a 10th one, it's a divine one. And um, the more that we can create quiet time, slow down time, contemplation time, sitting your ass down and zip it, like sit down, shut the fuck up, get quiet, go inward. When we can get off of uh, the clocks, the man-made clocks, the man-made calendars, right? The, when, we, when we get off of that rush and pull and uh, hurry up and, you know, that automatic, what's the word I'm looking for? We want to automatically it's not be pleased, uh, satisfaction, result, whatever the word, it's not the right word, but we, you know, we just want shit to happen now. Again, I think it's because our nervous systems have a hard time being in silence and being in stillness and just kind of sitting with what is, right? I see a lot of nervous systems that are wicked fidgety, uh, wicked amped up, right? And just sit still can be really hard for people. So as we can start to do some somatic work and some trauma healing work and maybe doing some breath work, some yoga, some spiritual work, you know, all those pillars of emotional well-being and mental well-being and physical well-being and spiritual well-being, and we can start to bring ourselves into a place of safety and trust. And I think it's one of the beautiful things that we can do is to trust that there is some sort of a DST and there is some sort of a maybe divine order, which is a story for another day. So you guys, I hope this was fun. I hope this was helpful. And I always say I'm not here to uh, convince anybody of anything. I'm not here to try and get you to think any particular way. It's this, this show is always just an invitation to think, to think for yourself. And I sometimes just like to share some things that, you know, weird, quirky little things that pop into my head. And maybe they'll resonate with you and maybe you can relate to it or maybe it will get you to look at something a little bit differently or to, you know, become more curious and to go, oh, I'd never looked at that like that. Or, hey, I think that too, or whatever the thing is. But really, this is just an opportunity for me to share something from my heart. And as the great uh, Leo Tolstoy said, you know, art is transferring feeling from one heart to another. And that's all I ever hope to do here is to share something with my heart and perhaps Perhaps through through the divine, the divine wavelengths and however it works, uh, it might also somehow land in your heart or resonate with your heart. So thank you so much for spending a little bit of time with me today. Um, doing talk, storytelling and I would say storytelling. I was talking to somebody the other day and she was like, so kind of what's your thing? And I said, oh, well, storytelling and spirituality is my playground. Like that's where I love to hang out and that's where I love to to do my work. And as many of you know, part of my work is that I am a certified spiritual mentor. I'm a certified hypnotist. Uh, and I work with people both in a group format in my community and membership, The Nest. And then I also have my one-to-one -one spiritual mentorship uh, that combines brain science, subconscious reprogramming, uh, healing hypnotherapy, and spiritual mentorship. And that is called The Quest. So you can work with me individually and privately. You can also work with me in a group. Um, and you know, there's obviously the podcast too. So this is another way for us to get to connect and be together and sometimes do a little work together. So you guys, thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you so much. I hope you're having a fantastic, oh, fall is upon us. I can feel the temperature changing. I can feel we're right on that precipice when the leaves are going to start to do their thing. Right. So, uh, we're leaving my favorite, uh, season of the year, <laughs> summer, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna roll with it, right? Everybody's already celebrating chunky sweaters and boots weather. And I'm like, oh man, I just enjoy the shorts and the t-shirts time so much. So you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. Thanks for tuning in. Wherever you go, may you leave yourself and the people and the place and any animals that you encounter and the environment that you end up in. Wherever you go. May people be happier and better off because you have been there. Wherever you go, may you be a blessing. Bye. Hey, you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Karen Kenny Show. <laughs> I super duper appreciate your time, friendship, and support. And look, if something that I shared from my heart today somehow landed in yours, I'd love to hear about it. 
So please tag me on Facebook or Instagram or IG stories or wherever the cool kids are hanging out these days. And let me know what your favorite pot was or what you found most helpful. You can find me over at Karen Kenny Live. That's Karen, K-E-N-N-E-Y-L-I-V-E. And if you're digging what I'm saying and you want to hear more, I'd be wicked grateful if you could go to iTunes and subscribe and leave a review because you guys, that's how you'll help me to keep spreading the love. And if you can think of someone that could benefit from hearing this episode, please share it with them. I'd also love to stay connected with you. So if the feeling is mutual, please go to karenkenny.com backslash freebie and download my free guide to building your spiritual team. Until next time, my brothers and sisters, keep living in the fearless flow. Know that I see you, I appreciate you, and I love you. And wherever you go, may you be a blessing. <laughs>